Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and here I'm going to show you how to set up the Thermalright PLS Assassin 140. This is obviously the, the white version of the CPU tower cooler, but the logic here will apply to the black variant as well. I'm going to show you how to mount it onto your motherboard and install it in your case, and I'm going to talk through everything you need to know in order to do so. Out of the box, you'll find a number of different parts included in here. So I'm going to talk through all of those different things, as well as how to set it up with an Intel motherboard with a Z890 socket motherboard, and also with an AMD AM5 setup as well. So I'm going to detail both of those and leave timestamps so you can jump to the relevant points. I'm starting with Intel though, and this is an LGA 1851 socket motherboard. So to install the CPU, you first need to lift the lever and the latch and expose the socket. We need to carefully seat the CPU into the socket here. If you pay attention, you'll see there's an arrow pointing down to the bottom left. And there's also cutouts on the top and bottom of the CPU that you can line up with plastic notches in the socket itself. So gently and carefully put that into the socket, taking care not to drop it in there because you don't want to damage the pins. Once that's done, we'll put the hatch back down and reseat the lever underneath the clip and remove the plastic cover. This is an LGA 1851 socket motherboard, which will require this back plate. But as you'll see, the back plate will also work with 1151, 1200 and 1700 socket motherboards. You just need to adjust the standoffs at the back by repositioning these clips. I want to move them to the outer edge so they match up with a 1700 socket motherboard because 1851 is just slightly bigger. So with this same backplate, we can actually use this with the newer variant of the motherboard as well. Extend that and then what you need to do is flip the motherboard over so you can access the back of it. You want at this point to remove these covers for the sticky tape that's on the rear of the back plate. This will help secure the back plate to the back of the motherboard. So line it up with the holes on the motherboard and push it through like this. Notice how the labeling is on the back of the back plate so you can copy me and make sure it's set up in the same way. Pushing that through into place, push it on the back a little bit so the sticky pads are then sorted out. Now you're gonna need this little bag with the blue plastic washers in it, which is marked 1700. So we're gonna use these to sit over the top of the back plate that we just put in a second ago with the standoffs that are pushing through now. So these washers just sit over the top of each of the four of these, slotting into position there. And then the brackets for the cooler will then sit over the top of this. So this part of the setup is fairly straightforward. It will then need these straight brackets. Now it's important to pay attention to these because you'll see there are three holes in them essentially that will sit down over the standoff. So we need to make sure we aim for the middle of these holes, which is a little bit fiddly to do, but we're laying it down over the top of the standoffs and the washers that we just put in place so that it looks like this. You want to do that on the top and bottom so that both of the brackets look like this, angling inwards with the little notches on the edges there. Once that's done, we can then apply the thermal paste. So we've got a tube of thermal paste included with the cooler, you just put a blob of that in the center and you might like to spread it out, cover the CPU or just leave it like that with a decent amount. We then want the screws that are in the bottom half of this bag, which is marked AM4, AM5, but don't worry because we want these screws in here. So you'll see there are some standoff screws included. We don't need, we can get those out of the way and we'll need these thumb screws instead. So these are going to be used to secure that bracket to the plastic washers that we put down a minute ago. So you secure four of these into position on top of these. Now take care when doing this that you don't knock the bracket because we want to make sure it stays in that same position. But basically positioning these over there and then tightening them up so that they're fully secured down and that that bracket is then held firmly in place because the cooler is going to sit down over that and you don't want it shifting around and it also needs to make good contact with the CPU when we put it down in place. So tighten these screws up and make sure you use a screwdriver to make sure they're fully tightened beforehand because as you can see otherwise they might end up being a little bit loose which may well be fairly obvious but as i said make sure the bracket doesn't slip around while you're doing so because otherwise it might end up in the wrong position and then you might end up with a problem where the cooler's not seating down properly then you peel off the little protective sticker on the bottom of the cooler and then what you're looking to do is to install it like this notice the thermal right branding and the way that's facing so that the screws sit down over the little bracket 
at the top and bottom of the CPU socket. We then need to use a screwdriver, and I'd recommend using a long one, because otherwise it's quite fiddly, to secure these screws in place. Now, I found that what you want to do is basically tighten one up a little bit, then move to the other one, and go back and forth between the two, tightening each individually. And doing this ensures that it tightens up properly and doesn't awkwardly tighten and loosen as you're doing it, because it can be a little bit fiddly to do this. Obviously, we want to make sure that these are fully tightened, but you also want to be careful not to be aggressive and over tighten them. So just screw until they won't screw anymore, but don't force it because you don't want to put additional pressure on there that might damage the CPU socket and the pins in there. But the bracketing and the cooler securing should work quite well so that it ends up being nicely secured there. If it's too loose, as a side note, you will then find that the CPU doesn't get cooled effectively because it's not making good contact with the cooler. So that is an important part of it. You just need to take care when securing it like this. Next, for securing the fans, you'll need these brackets. Notice that these two brackets are labelled. One says 140mm, the other one says 120mm. That's because they obviously need to be used with the two different fan types that are included with the cooler. So the rounder one is the 140mm fan, so use the 140mm bracket to pop into the holes on that. You need to position the bracket on the front side of this, i.e. where the fan face is, on either side, and these will then help you to install the fans over the radiator by securing it around the fins. So we need to put this into the middle. Notice obviously that the power cable is at the bottom of the fan. Slot it into place and then use the brackets to hook over the fins on the tower. You'll do this on both sides so that your fan is secured properly here. Also notice which way round I put it in because you want the air to be pulled through the radiator and exhausted out of the back of the case, which means you want the fan blades to face towards the right. Repeat the process using the 120mm fan and the relevant brackets for that. Again, ensure that the power cables at the bottom of the fan and the clips are on the side with the fan blades facing towards you because they want to mount on the other side of the radiator. So we're going to mount this on the right hand side above your RAM and then what you want to do is seat it over the side there and then use the brackets to hook onto the fins on the side as well, notching into place here. Obviously the 120mm means you've got more room for your RAM. Then you have two power cables to deal with. You can either plug these in directly to the motherboard or you can use this splitter cable. So the splitter cable allows you to plug both fans into it and then to plug them into a single port on the motherboard, which makes life a little easier. Plug them into that splitter, and then what you want to do is to find the CPU fan header on the motherboard and plug it into that. This is usually at the top left of the motherboard. Refer to your motherboard manual to find out where it is. But you'll see with a close-up view of that that it pushes into the socket, and there's a little plastic clip on the socket which supports it as it goes in. But you can see here from a couple of different angles, so it's obvious how you do it, where you'd plug it in. It's also easy to do this now while it's outside the case before you install the motherboard in the build, so you can make sure it's put in properly and is easy to access. And this can then be controlled in the BIOS, as I'll show you later on. Now we're on to AMD with an AM5 socket motherboard in the form of the B850A. And what we're doing here is installing the CPU first of all. So installing the CPU is as simple as removing the latch by just lifting that lever and then inserting the CPU gently into the socket, lining up the notches on the CPU with the plastic parts on the socket and then putting the lever back down and lifting the little plastic cover out of the way. Make sure that's well secured, but take care while doing it. With the Peerless Assassin unboxed, you'll find various different parts in here. Obviously, some are for Intel, so you're not going to need them for an AMD setup, but you'll find that most of them are clearly labelled. And we're using an AM5 socket motherboard here, so you want to watch out for the little bag that says AM5 on it. We're going to need those parts from the top part of that bag, along with these AM4 brackets here, which are the same for AM5, so don't worry about that. I'll show you how to set those up in a second. In order to do that, first of all, though, we need to remove the standard pre-installed standoffs and bracketing above and below the CPU socket. So there are four screws to remove there, and then you want to take the plastic clips out. I'd recommend setting these aside, putting them in the motherboard box, and keeping hold of them because you might want to replace them in future. But we need those out of the way so that we can then secure the bits that come with the Assassin. 
So in this little bag, you'll notice there's some pink little standoffs and some screws. First of all, you need to put those plastic standoffs over the ports that we've removed the original standoffs from. So we can set those down there and then we're going to secure that and then put the bracket on top to secure those down as well. So in order to do that, first of all, we need to make sure we line those up properly. So with that AM4 bracket, basically you've got to put it so it has the curve facing the way I'm doing it. So you can see it curves up towards the CPU at the bottom, for example. You're gonna put that down there and then we're going to secure the screws through it. So this is an AM5 socket motherboard, but obviously we're using the AM4 bracket because that's all that comes with the Assassin, but it's designed to work like this still anyway. So with the long screws, we push them through that bracket, through the plastic standoffs and into the holes that are on the motherboard from where we removed the original standoffs. Then make sure those are screwed in and tightened up nicely. Repeat the process on the top. Notice the curve for the bracket is now facing towards the CPU from the top as well. So the curve goes in the same direction, but obviously AM4 is now upside down at the top, but the right way up at the bottom. With the motherboard largely prepped now, we're going to install the thermal paste that's included with the thermal right cooler. So you can put a blob in the center of the CPU. I would recommend, however, making sure that the thermal paste is spread across the top. You can use a little spatula or something similar for this to rub it across the top there and make sure there's good coverage. This ensures that the cooler seats down properly over the CPU and there's good thermal coverage there will ensure nice cooling under use. We then need to remove the little plastic protective cover on the heat sink and then line the cooler up. So this cooler is going to sit down on the two screws that are sticking upwards from the bracketing we put in place there. So you seat that down like this being careful not to rub it around too much because you don't want to damage the thermal paste we've put in place. And then you're going to need a long screwdriver. Mine was a bit short, so this was quite fiddly to do. But basically, we're looking to secure those two screws. I'd recommend screwing one in a little bit, then moving over to the other one, screw that bit up, and then move back and forth between them. This will otherwise adjust the cooler into a bit of a strange position while you're doing it, which makes life awkward. So keep going back and forth between these two screws until it's nicely secured and you can't tighten it up anymore. Don't want to force it because you don't want to damage anything, but you do need to make sure it is tight so there's good contact there. Next up, we're going to secure the fans. You'll notice that the brackets come with labeling on them. So these two brackets are for the separate fans. One's labeled 140 millimeter, the other one's labeled 120. So make sure you don't mix these up. The rounder fan is the 140 millimeter fan. So we take those 140 millimeter brackets and put them through the holes on the front of the fan to then hook into that. These are going to then hook over the cooler when it's in place and then set it up so that it's got good cooling. You need to make sure these are installed the right way around as well. So you want to see the front of the fan. That would be the intake setup. So what we're doing here is we're slotting that in the middle with the fan facing towards the right hand side so that it'll be pulling air through the radiator and helping to cool this. Now that obviously goes in the middle and then the 120 millimeter fan goes on the outside. The clips are hooked over the radiator fins as you'll see. So with the 120 millimeter bracket, we'll repeat this process for the smaller fan. The reason this is smaller is so it doesn't interfere with your RAM. We slot that in like this, once again, making sure the brackets are the right way around so the fan blades are facing outwards. So you want to do here is to line that fan up on the outside and then hook the brackets around the fins on the radiator and slot that into place like this. Make sure that both fans are facing the same direction, essentially. We then have this splitter cable, which allows you to connect up both fans to a single connector on the motherboard. So take the connectors from both of those fans and plug it into this, and that will allow you to then use just one connector on your motherboard. Alternatively, you could use a CPU fan header and CPU optional if you wanted to do them separately to so plug those into the separate connectors. But what we're aiming for here is a CPU fan header, which you'll see here on the left hand side at the top of the motherboard. We can connect that up and make sure it's plugged in nicely there. You'll notice that this is a four pin connector and there's a little plastic notch there that you have to line it up with and slot it into place. So you can't plug it in the wrong way around. Once that's done, you obviously just need to install the motherboard into your case. So I'm using the Haven BF360 for demonstration purposes here, but the logic is basically the same for most cases. Got an ATX motherboard, it'll sit down over the ATX standoffs. Then you have to use the relevant screws to secure 
the motherboard to the case. Obviously, at this point, the CPU cooler is already set up. So the next stage is just to make sure that everything's working set up properly in the BIOS. Once your PC is built, I'd fully recommend going into the BIOS to change some of the settings. So in order to do this, obviously, when it's connected to a monitor and keyboard, hit delete on your keyboard when you start booting the PC up and you should get into the BIOS. From there, you want to look for the fan tuning settings. And in there, what you want to do is head over to the CPU fan section and select PWM mode. Make sure that your fans are set to PWM mode and then they will be controlled properly and you should find that they won't spin super fast as a result. You can also do this with system fans that are connected to other headers. If they're PWM fans, it will then ensure that they go at the right speed and they follow the relevant fan curve. If you're lucky, the BIOS will also have a tuning section that you can use to apply some automatic tuning to them. And then you just want to exit and save. And you should hopefully then be able to game away happily with your new system. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, check out the links in the description to related content. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. Consider giving me a, a like or dropping a comment down below to let me know if this has been useful. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.